Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Scouts TV. <clears throat> Tonight it's all about kings and queens in tribute to the Queen's birthday whose holiday we are celebrating this weekend. Tonight I've got Will here from Ninth Brighton again to help out. And tonight we are going to be playing some games, making a shield, and learning how to tie a sling. Uh, so let's get to opening parade. You ready? Okay, pack, pack, pack. Pack. Okay, long. We'll do our best. Do our best. We'll do our best. Alrighty. Excellent. Okay, well thanks, Will. Uh, I'll let you go for the time being, and let's get straight into a game. Oh, before we do that, sorry, um, just if for the mums and dads out there, what we're going to need tonight is some pens and pencils, some markers, some colourful um, markers to make this shield. Um, and, um, and there'll be lots of instructions on the website, scoutstv.com.au, um, where you can make the, the proper shield afterwards. We're just going to design the shield. So um, let's kick off with a game. So um, the first game is, uh, is we're going to be escaping uh, the dragon. So I'm going to do some actions and I want you to follow as we escape the dragon. All right, so make sure you've got some room. Um, let's go. All right, so first we're going to run away. So just running on the spot, running away from the dragon. And then you're going to get to a, uh, a little stream. So we're going to jump over the stream. So jump over the stream, keep running, duck under a branch, down. Watch out for the, uh, the dragon. Just move out of the way to the one side. Move out of the way on the other side. All right, keep running, keep running, keep running. Okay, another stream, jump over the stream. Duck under a branch. Running, running, running. Oh, there's the dragon again. Watch out for the dragon one way. Watch out for the dragon the other way. Keep running, running on the spot. All right, duck, duck down this time. Keep running, another stream to jump over. Keep going, all right. Uh, sh Whoa, watch out for the dragon that way. Watch out for the dragon that way. All right, and stop. All righty. Now, in that, I got hit by the dragon and I hurt my arm. So the next thing we're going to do is learn how to tie a sling. And that's why I've got Will here. So Will, if you can come in. And one of the great things about scouts is that if you don't have... Here, Will, stand up here again, please. If you don't have a, a big triangular bandage um, in your first aid kit, you have your scarf which is a beautiful triangle. And so, which arm did you get uh, injured with, Will? Is it your left or right arm, that arm? Okay, so just face the camera. So when you're, um, when you're tying a sling and uh, you have the, the straight arm, uh, the straight part of the triangle going straight down the body and the point going out to the elbow of the broken arm. So you put that under and we put that over the non-injured side and it should come around the side and then we bring just turn this way Will. we bring this up to form the sling and just turn towards me again Will. so what we we use our, one of our favorite knots in scouting is the reef knot and so here we tie a reef knot. So remember, to tie a reef knot, we say to ourselves, right over left and under, and then left over right and under. And by tying it as a reef knot, then we know that it's going to hold, but it's also going to be easy, if I can pull that, it's going to be easy to undo when we need to take that sling off. Okay, we wanna make sure that the sling, the little finger's just showing at the end of the sling there, and then with any loose material at this end, we can twist that together until it's tight. And then we can tuck that into the elbow. And so Will's arm that got injured when he was escaping from the dragon is now immobilized. Um, we want to make sure that everything's not too tight because you can actually lose circulation um, and so you would be needing to check the circulation by pinching the finger for five seconds and then when you release it after five seconds that the colour should come back to that finger within two seconds. If it's not coming back then circulation might be that it's too tight and you'd need to loosen it off. 
and there's lots of other bits and pieces that you need to know about tying a sling but tonight I just wanted to show how you can use your Cub Scout scarf and use our favourite reef knot to immobilise an arm in that way. Ideally we'd also have Will sitting down rather than standing up to demonstrate that. Are you feeling comfortable Will? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Alright well thanks very much for helping out tonight Will. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Excellent. Okay guys, so next we're going to be designing our very own shield. So let's get down to the table and get ready to do some drawing. <clears throat> okay, so in the, uh, <clears throat> in the olden days when there were knights um, protecting the king and queen, they would have their armour on and you wouldn't be able to actually tell who was who. So knights began to wear helmets, they, they covered their faces um, and they, used to, they began by painting unique combinations of colours, shapes and animals called their arms on their shields and banners. And only one person was allowed to use these arms and so when you saw a knight wearing them in battle or tournament, you could tell who he was. So ideally you could tell who your friends were and who your foes were. So uh, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to design our very own shield. And there's lots of resources up on the website about this. We're going to design it tonight and then later on what you can do is you can make a bigger version of this, put it onto cardboard and make your own shield and all the details about that you can find um, on our website. So to start off with, I'm just going to draw a shield shape. So a straight line across and then coming down to a sort of point, never mind. Now there are some very, uh, some rules about how the, um, the shields were designed. So the first one is around the colours. So the colours of heraldry um, were split into to two groups. There were the colours and the colours were red, blue, green, black and purple. And then they had metal colours. So gold or yellow and silver or white. Um, they also had uh, some other ones but, but we're going to keep it with these, uh, these simple colours um, to start off with. Now, they also had rules to say if you were colouring in um, and, and designing your shield is that you don't mix the colours. The colours can't go on top of each other or, or touch each other, um, but you can have a metal on a colour. So we could have a yellow, a yellow background or gold background and we could have red, red on top of that, but we couldn't have the the gold and the silver together or we couldn't put the blue on, uh, sorry, <clears throat> we couldn't put a, um, a red background and have another colour on top of it. <clears throat> so we've got our colours. Um, what we, we do next onto our shield before we start colouring is, is we come up with a uh, what they call an ordinary and so this is a design, I'll just bring a few of these ordinary shapes here for us to have a look at. So we've got our shield and, and the ordinaries here are the shapes uh, on the shield. So, and they've got different names, so a bend, a, a saltire, a cross, a pile, a chief. And so when you're designing it, you choose one of these, so um, I'm going to uh, use the cross on mine. So I can draw cross on my shield. <clears throat> and then we can also, we have few other choices here so <clears throat> on top of um, on top of this there's firstly the what we call the the charges and so these could be 
crosses, stars, rings, balls, crescents, diamonds, or flowers. Um, and so on here, we might decide to do some, some crescents. So I might draw a, a crescent. And I might actually draw some stars up the top. So you could do just some balls. Um, the rings. Uh, obviously, a, you can put a diamond on. Um, flowers. I'm not going to draw a flower on mine because that sounds far too complicated. And you don't need to, you know, depending on what ordinary you use to bring these back um, you know if you say you chose the a chevron um, you could just draw one ordinary under the chevron or if it was a chief um, now once you've done that design we then can also think about uh, putting an animal on and um, the animals represent uh, different aspects and there's different stances. So you can see here we've got a lion and a hare rearing up or in a rampant position. Um, they could be standing, so the dog here is, is standing. And they could be in a walking position um, or they could have like this eagle wings outstretched. Um, so if the animal's looking towards you, it's on guard. They all had lots of different meanings to them. And there's, I've got on, again, on our website, <clears throat> we've got lots of different, um, lots of different pictures of, of animals that you can choose from. And so here I have chosen the dragon. So the dragon is uh, a fabled beast as a brave and cunning defender of treasure. So uh, <clears throat> if I was making a big shield, I'd cut out the, um, cut out the, uh, the big big version of, of my dragon. So you can get mum and dad to print these for you and stick them on later. And again, if you like the idea of putting an animal on your shield, um, then you may want to come back <laughs> and choose a different ordinary to start off with um, and then it's also a good idea to know a little bit more about what the animals mean so if you were to choose the line it's to show bravery a dog shows reliability and faithfulness uh, a stag like a deer is wisdom and long life eagles are for power and nobility uh, a hare which is like a big rabbit, if you don't know what a hare is, is for speed. Um, badges are for endurance and hanging on. And what you might do is you might choose some Australian animals rather than these sort of more English versions. Um, and that you can put it, you know, you can put any other animal on. If you'd like to put your cat or a horse or other pet that you have, that's that can be done as well. So once you've got your design in terms of the layout from your ordinary um, etc is then you can choose your colors so remembering that um, I might decide to use gold as to color in the main shape And so I can't, because I've, I've now split up these four spots, so I can ch choose different colours if I wanted different colours. So I might choose to have red. And you can do this 
You can do this with paints if you have them, rather than, and especially if you're going to make a big shield. So I might choose to do red up the top and down the bottom here. Nice and easy with these crayons to colour in. And I might choose blue for the opposite. So I haven't broken any of the colour rules because I don't have, I've got my metal colour being my gold, separating my colours, so no colour is against a colour. And what that means is that the only colour choices that I have for my objects inside here is one of the metallic colours. So remembering that is either gold or silver. And I think silver is going to look a little bit plain, so I'm going to colour mine in gold. And because I chose a dragon who's a defender of treasure, all this gold is what that dragon is here to defend. And so, I might just blue my dragon. to the middle of my shield <clears throat> and obviously I could colour colour this in a little bit uh, a little bit better and colouring around the dragon with my my reds and blues or I could have just cut my dragon out a little bit uh, neater but what you can do is you can do a, a, a large scale version of this if you've got you know, a big piece like I've got here an A3 piece of paper if I turn that the other way um, and then um, if, you've got a, if you've got a plain piece of cardboard that you can, you can draw on then, um, then that's fine or you can do it on, on paper like I've done it here and then cut out your shield and stick it onto the cardboard. And the reason you do that is because as a piece of paper, it's not really going to protect you much at all. But if you put that onto a, a piece of cardboard, it's much stronger. So the next time the dragon is attacking you or your brother or sister, um, you can use it as protection. Now we do have instructions um, on the website in terms of how to make uh, the full shield out of this, like putting it onto cardboard. I'm not going to show you uh, that tonight, um, but you can follow those instructions and, and make a, a full shield. But I think that looks pretty neat. Um, and hopefully you've been able to make something pretty cool as well. Don't forget to uh, take photos um, of what you've done and send them in. Um, alrighty. <clears throat> now I do have a uh, <clears throat> I do have a uh, a a quick riddle for you, which is related to kings and queens. Uh, so here it, here it goes. You listening? One night, a king and queen rode in a boat to a deserted island. The next day, three people returned in that boat. Who were they? So I'll say it again. One night, a king and queen rowed in a boat to a deserted island. The next day, three people returned in that boat. Who were they? Now while you're thinking about that, I've got some photos to show 
um, from a couple of weeks ago. So first of all, I think we've got, who have we got up? Uh, I think we've got Max. So here is Max's uh, boat that he drew and the train that he drew uh, from the directions episode a few weeks ago. Well done, Maxie. That's Max from Ninth Brighton. Uh, and then here is Isabel's uh, train that she drew. Thanks for sending that in, Isabel. And that's Isabel's boat. Beautiful. All right, thank you. So don't uh, please remember that you can send uh, send those in to us. Um, the, all the details in terms of how to get in contact with us are on Cub Scouts uh, uh, Scouts TV .com .au. Um, So please do that. All right. Uh, before we go, let's do a quick Kim's game. So let's get back down to the the table. Now, if you remember, the Kim's game is all about being able to memorise. Uh, a series of items. So um, if you've got your uh, a pen and paper, uh, don't write anything down yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go through the items on the, the plate here. I'm then going to cover the plate and I need you to, um, uh, when it's covered, write down as many of these items as you can remember. So we have a stamp, a badge, a nail, some sticky tape, a pine cone, a dinosaur, a crayon, and a torch. So have a look at them. See if you can get them into your get those uh, into your memory. And I'm now going to cover as best as I can. As long as this. Uh, Beautiful. All right, so I'm going to give you 30 seconds uh, to write down as many of those items as you can remember. Okay, so how do we go everyone? Pens down. Did you get everything? So let's go through them again to stick these off. Did we get the stamp? The pine cone? The nail? The badge? Sticky tape? Dinosaur, a crayon, and the torch. Now, we'll keep doing this game over the next you know, next term and, and so on to try and get um, to improve your memory. And if you haven't heard me say it before, one of the ways that I like to try and remember everything is to put all the objects in to weave them into some sort of story. So. Um, it could be that uh, once upon a time I went walking through the the pine through the forest and bent down to, to pick up a pine cone. Um, there was a nail stuck into the pine cone, which is very weird. And um, I thought to myself, um, I wonder how that got there. If someone has put some, you know, stuck it together with some sticky tape. Um, and then I. Uh, you know, how do I weave the rest of it into it? I looked up and saw a dinosaur coming towards me. Um, it just looked like a dinosaur I'd seen a stamp or a badge. And I got a crayon out to draw it, but it was dark, so I then turned on my torch. And so you cover it all up. And you try and remember that weird story that we said, which was that I was walking along in a forest and bent down to pick up a pine cone. And I saw that there was a nail in it, which I thought was strange. Um, I wonder how it got there. Had someone stuck it in there with sticky tape? Um, how many items have I got? I've only got three. I looked up and saw a dinosaur that was coming towards me that looked like it was just on a stamp or a badge. Well, that's seven. Uh, I was drawing a picture of it with a crayon. Um, and then there was the, um, 
the torch because it was getting dark. Um, I can't remember the other two that I've, I've missed. What did I miss? Or did I get everything? How many items do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We had only had eight. And I think I got all like, eight of them. So um, so that's you know a good way of, of trying to do it. <clears throat> Alrighty. Uh, all right, well, that's all the activities that we had tonight. Um, yep, so we've got uh, two things to go. The spot the difference. So I'm not sure if you were able to, to, to spot the difference on what I was wearing tonight. I'll let you have a think about that. And then the riddle. So the riddle was, one night a king and queen rode in a rowboat to a deserted island. The next day three people returned. Who were they? So there was no one extra. There wasn't anyone hidden in the boat. There wasn't anyone on the island. No one flew in. Um, it was on the boat. It was one night, a king and a queen. So it was a night, not nighttime, daytime night. It was a night, a king and queen. So there were three people in the boat and they were the three that returned. Hopefully you were able to figure that one out. Uh, and then spot the difference. So... Oh, it's not that side, it's this side. Uh, tonight I'm wearing my Cub Scouts badge. I think I should have one on both shoulders, but I've only got one to show. Um, so hopefully you are, you're also able to, to pick that up. All right, I hope you all have a great Queen's birthday long weekend. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it. It was her birthday on the 21st of April, and she was born in 1926, so she is quite old. The Queen, um, happy birthday for April, happy birthday for the long weekend. Um, thank you very much uh, for watching, uh, just a final parade, so uh, Scouts alert, Scouts at ease, Scouts dismissed. Uh, good hunting and be safe.